This is a video about the GCSE chemistry topic of recycling, which is part of paper two for AQA GCSE chemistry and combined science and comes up in chemistry unit 10. By the end of this video, you should have defined the terms reduce, reuse and recycle. You should be able to describe how metal, glass and paper can be recycled. You should be able to explain why recycling may be difficult and you should be able to evaluate the environmental, economic and social impacts of reusing and recycling products. We'll also talk briefly about other places in the exams that recycling may turn up. We can increase the efficiency with which we use different materials in three key ways. Firstly, we can reduce our usage by cutting down on how many raw materials we use. This could be things like not buying individually wrapped vegetables. Secondly, we can reuse things. So for instance, when you go to the supermarket, if you take a bag for life that you can use more than once so that you don't need to buy a new bag, then that's going to reduce the number of plastic bags that need to be made. Finally, we can recycle something, which means processing it to make a new product. There are lots of good reasons to recycle, and we can break these down into reasons that are to do with saving money, so economic reasons, reasons that are good for the world around us, environmental reasons, and reasons that are good for the people around us or for future generations, social reasons. So economically, it's a good idea to recycle because many raw materials are scarce and things that we don't have much of tend to be expensive. It's often cheaper to recycle than to extract new, although this isn't always the case. So for instance, aluminium metal costs an awful lot of money to extract from the ground, but not nearly as much to recycle. And that's one of the reasons that we're very good at recycling aluminium cans. On the other hand, plastic is quite expensive to recycle and not particularly any more expensive to make from scratch. And that's why so much plastic waste isn't recycled, even when we try to as households. From an environmental point of view, recycling often has lower energy costs. And those energy costs often mean there's electricity involved and that's from burning fossil fuels. So that's going to reduce emissions of greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide. Also, often recycling is going to mean there's going to be less mining and less environmental damage. Particularly if you're thinking about recycling metal, getting that rock out of the ground to extract the metal is just going to kind of wreak havoc on the landscape. Also, the more we're recycling, the less we're throwing things away into landfill and landfill space is running out. So that's better for the environment as well. From a social point of view, recycling is more sustainable and it means that there are more raw resources available for future generations. Next, we're going to look at how we can recycle three materials, starting with aluminium cans. When metal is recycled, it's often all put in together. So the first thing that we need to do is get just the aluminium. Big electromagnets are used to remove all of the iron and steel so that the only cans that are left behind are those that are made of aluminium. These are then squashed and shredded into small pieces, and these can be blasted with hot air to remove any labels or ink, so we're just left with the aluminium behind. These pieces are then fed into a furnace at about 750 degrees C, which is hot enough to melt the aluminium. Any impurities in there, which we call dross, are going to rise to the surface and can be scraped off. The pure aluminium cools down and is cast into metal blocks called ingots. These are then sent out to a rolling mill where they can be flattened out into thin sheets for making new cans. Once glass has been separated from other recyclable materials using magnets and air suction, it needs to be colour sorted, and this is often done using lasers. It's then crushed into small pieces called cullet, and these can be melted in a furnace at over 1500 degrees C. The liquid glass is then divided into gobs, and these can be blown into new bottles and jars. Recycling paper and cardboard is often much harder than glass and aluminium, and there are two main reasons for this. The first one is that there are so many different types of paper and card which have been processed in different ways and made for different purposes and they don't need to be recycled in the same way. But the thing is it's much harder to sort different types of paper out compared with say different colours of glass. The second reason is that the recycling process fundamentally changes paper. So whereas the aluminium cans that are made of recycled aluminium are basically indistinguishable from brand new aluminium, when you recycle paper, you shorten and weaken the fibres. So after you've recycled it maybe five times, it can't be recycled anymore because the fibres are just too weak and it won't make good paper. Often that means that when we're making recycled paper, it's not completely recycled anyway. It's mixed with some new wood pulp so that it's kind of half and half recycled and not. In the recycling process, the paper is collected and transported to a recycling plant and it's separated out into different types of paper as far as they can. So things like copy paper, newspaper and also contaminated paper, which can't be recycled. 
it's shredded and broken down to fibres and these are then cleaned and screened. So if you remember in the water purification video we talked about how there was a metal grid that the water would pass through to remove any twigs and things. This is basically the same process only instead of twigs it's just little bits. Then the ink needs to be removed and the paper is bleached to make it bright white again. It's usually combined with some virgin fibres, that's what we call the brand new wood pulp that hasn't been made into paper before, and the reason for this is that the recycled paper is not strong enough to make usable paper on its own. And then the combined pulp can be pressed to form paper. We all know that recycling is a good thing and we all know that we don't do enough of it, so what might be some of the barriers that prevent everyone from recycling everything? Pause the video and see if you can write down some ideas for why recycling semi-skimmed milk bottles and copper metal might be challenging. For the milk bottle, the issue comes from the two different colours of plastic, the green lid and the white bottle. The problem is that if they get recycled together, you're going to end up with plastic that has a slight greenish tinge to it. And nobody wants to buy milk that's in a bottle that's ever so slightly green. It just looks like there's something wrong with it. So that means that you know real humans, real people, have to go around and take the lids off all the bottles. And that's obviously hugely time consuming and you have to pay them to do that. So it's going to make the plastic much more expensive and it wasn't exactly cheap to begin with. For the copper, the issue is separating it out from other types of metal. There isn't a property like magnetism that can be used to separate the copper. So because it isn't magnetic, it just ends up being mixed in with all the other non-magnetic metals and that makes it much harder to recycle. You might be asked to justify why it's better to reduce, reuse and recycle than send things to landfill or incineration. And you might also be asked to pick out which is the most appropriate option. So in this question, we're asked why it's better to recycle a car body when it's scrapped rather than either reuse it or send it to landfill. So we need to address each of those points. The first thing is that obviously metal is scarce. So sending it to landfill is just a big waste. We've got a big piece of steel sitting in a hole in the ground when it could be being made into something more useful. The second thing is that landfill space is scarce as well, so it's a waste from that point of view. And then it's better to recycle the car body rather than reuse it because it might be damaged or experiencing metal fatigue, or it might just be covered in paint that it's really hard to get off. So it couldn't really be directly reused, and if we did, it could be dangerous. Recycling may also come up as a smaller part of larger questions about other parts of the specification. Later in Unit 10, you'll meet the idea of life cycle assessment, in which we decide which of some different materials is the most appropriate for use. As part of the data in these questions, they'll sometimes give you information about which material can be reused or recycled the most. And they want you to make that connection that being able to reuse or recycle the material will make it more sustainable. So in this question, we were picking the most appropriate material to make milk bottles out of. And they want you to identify that the glass milk bottle can be reused 25 times more and also that it has five times more recycled material in it. And both of those are going to make it a more sustainable material. There'll be lots of other reasons that the plastic milk bottle might be better, but they want you to make this link to sustainability here. I hope you found that a useful introduction to the recycling topic. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more Unit 10 videos coming soon.